We're going back. We're going back. What's up? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to it. Another session with me being crazy. So, uh, my Thursday streams are really about project based. So, I want, again, we're going to continue on this journey, what I'm doing specifically with uh, a sci fi ship inside a ZBrush. Um, and I want to revisit the whole idea here again. So <clears throat> that we can go, but I want to make sure that you guys can see my screen fine and that the audio is fine for you all now. I know I see someone said there was audio issue, so it should be fine now. Uh, let me know if it's not, though, so I can uh, make sure that everyone's good to go. <laughs> what up, Big Big Joe? Uh Okay, Randy's got Randy's got tangents out there. Are we starting off with a tangent alert again today in this stream? Bah, 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 bah. Okay, Randy, go ahead, throw the tangent at me, and we'll see how we can fit it in here for you. So let me go through my images again, just to. Oh yes, playoff beard, right? Yeah, this is this is the quarantine face. This is called lazy face, where you now like the rest of us, you get out. And I'm like, okay, my office is in the back. So you roll out of bed, you do your showering. I found just at least going through the process of getting ready every day at least feels like, you know, you're in a motion doing something. And of course, with someone with a child trying to do the same thing with her. So anyways, <clears throat> so this is specifically the thing I'm trying to do. So you can see this book, which I actually have and own. So I would recommend this book. Uh, it's a fun book for sure to go at, so it's right here. I'm gonna adjust my light a little bit more to give us a little bit more light here. So this is a, a cool book. So this is kind of the idea I'm going for, all right? So stuff like that, right? So it's not it's not a very thick book, as you can see, it's, it's pretty thin, right? Um, but what my goal is here is doing something like this, right? So I wanna model something, you know, do the sci-fi stuff, right? But then, have some fun with it and uh, my goal is to take this to the details that I want and then do interiors and then show and create a render like you're seeing here in these images where I've got cut out parts of the ship and you can see the inside right so this is a ship that I know you guys might not love the movie which is fine Prometheus but I really love the ship so in fact let me scroll over here again I've got the Prometheus book as well. And believe it or not, it's actually a pretty good book. Uh, I find some great inspiration. Like there's some stuff with some interior shots in here, right? So it's it's not bad, okay? I know we don't love, I know some of us don't love the movie, but you know what? The book helped me, uh, Ridley Scott kind of um, talked about, because he was writing Prometheus right after Alien and from what he says in this book. He was trying to figure out where the aliens come from. So just another cool shot of the Prometheus. Okay, so I uh, I like it. I dig it. You know, I pulled these books out. I'm a big art book collector for me because when I'm making something, I like to look at things from inspiration. And I'll look at this. You know, like obviously you can see there's their, their cockpit or i.e. their bridge. It looks, you know, this is kind of where I got the idea of doing the way I want to do my bridge. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I like this idea. I have more windows just everywhere. I liked that idea. Um, so continuing on, my goal is to do something like this. I'm kind of creating like, what if I made an owner's manual kind of tech thing for my ship, right? Instead of just doing just a ship, I want to, I want to go deeper down the rabbit hole here. And that's what my Thursday streams are about. It's about project based, going down a little bit more. My Tuesday streams are more focused on particular feature sets and looking at using a feature specifically. Um, but this one is more about, I want to make something like this, or I'm going to show you guys how in this stream series for this, making a render like this inside of ZBrush. Um, Cause I want to make like a poster in essence that I can put on my wall of this tech spec or, you know, you guys could do that and sell it where you want to, if you want to have your own work. So, I think it's just fun and it's cool and trying to do challenging things, you know, getting a render like what I'm showing you right now, getting a render like this inside of ZBrush. I'm, we're going to go through 
and we're gonna look at how maybe could do things like this uh, in this in this stream series or even you know this has got a little bit more of a sketch look to it right there's some lines through here it's more of a sketching line maybe how to get type of renders like this right or this is another great book which of course I own another going Scott Robertson uh, really amazing artist great teacher too so it's a great book um, you know, just as a person that grew up drawing more than anything, I drew a lot growing up. I really love this book, but I take these ideas that I read in books like this. And for me, I'm just trying to ex expand my art mind. And it actually works for me when I then go hop into ZBrush. I, I use that knowledge and that things I'm learning maybe by he's talking about in his book and I apply it in the ZBrush world. Right. And so he does stuff like this, right. Which I'm gonna mess around and see how we can maybe even get a render or something, a render like this inside of ZBrush as well. Okay, something similar to this. This will be in this series, right? I'm just kind of revamping, re-showing you guys. Eh, eh, have it as well, right? So you can see I'm just a big, oh yes, dude, the Sulaco. Oh yes, wait, wait, in fact, oh yeah. Yeah, I have the the miniature of the Sulaco. Um, and I've been lucky enough to see the actual Sulaco from the film in person and have pictures of it. It's pretty awesome. Sid Mean, I'm a big, big, huge fan. Um, so sad to lose him this past year. Huge fan of him. Uh, but like stuff like this, I'll pull this out and I'll look at the ideas and the thoughts. And this is what we're going to get into today, right? So... If we look at just the Sulaco, if I try and get the camera, how good I can get my camera to go for you guys. Like right here along in the front, especially, right? Looking at the, this paneling that they did in there. So here, we'll go to the, I have an actual image of the Sulaco. So, hold on, give me one sec. Let me put that back on my shelf, right? So, um, doing like a render like this but today i want to look at you know taking our ships to the final part and again i challenge you all to try this is obviously i think we're in part three right now so i've already done two parts to this so i challenge you guys i would love for you guys to try and now do what i've been showing you and share it with me the best way to do this is doing it uh through zebra central and just putting the at pixel paul and then I'll get an email. So today I want to talk about all this paneling and stuff. Unfortunately, I got so busy this week that I wasn't able to do take my ship to where I wanted to. So guess what? We're going to do it together. So we're going to do the things I would have done just my experimenting, right? We're going to do it all together. So again, here, I'm going to put the at, again, Pixo Paul. Okay, so this, that I just put in the chat is the at Pixo Paul. How's it going from India? Thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, we're looking at art from others and I will... Yeah, you know, I think though, Mike, it's good to look at. There isn't an artist that doesn't look at other artists and take inspiration from another artist. But it in, in essence, an artistic mind for me, it just sparks an idea and takes it there. And then as you work, you're going to do your own things. Uh, yeah, I even have the Blueprints book, but it's at the bottom the Star Wars Blueprints book is one of the best books ever, ever, that I've ever owned. I haven't. I could try and pull it out. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to Randy's question since, you know, we're kind of be, going to be using this. So he's asking, using IMM object and turning it into a curve option, how do we rotate that IMM 90 degree clockwise so it follows di directly that curve? Randy, that's all about how you're picking up the mesh. That's that's what it is. Okay, so uh, to Randy's question, our first... This is a mini tangent because I'm kind of going into this today too for how I would in fact start making this mech come to life a little bit more and doing some cool panel looping and panel lines. So, <clears throat> so let's just... Let's just quickly look at his question here. So let's just grab a brush here. So I'm gonna switch the models and uh, let's grab an insert IMM brush. Let's grab the model kit one, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, so you see this circular piece I have selected right now, okay? 
So I got this circular one highlighted up here on the top right now. So this allowing us to draw it out. So what, what he's been doing obviously is coming here into the stroke palette and turning on curve mode. Okay. So how this is working, Randy, when you draw this out, you can see the cylinders are, are they're all facing you, right? It's because that's how it was picked up. When it was put into the brush, it was picked up that direction. Okay. Now, you have the ability, however, that now in ZBrush, okay, is you have the ability to say, okay, this area here, I want to rotate. Okay. So in case some people didn't know this, you can actually see rotation in the curve. So when the brush is red, that's drawing. When the brush is blue, you're in essence editing the curve. Okay. So if I come through here and then I click on the curve first and then hold control key, you can actually rotate, right? Portions of this. And what, what it's doing is using the draw size. So when it's blue, if I go with a bigger draw size, right? And then I click and control key, you see it rotates more of them, right? And you can see a rotation there, right? And then you can see the red brush size is smaller. This is saying how many of these to repeat, right? And the size of them. So you have this ability where you have rotation ability, okay? You even with that said, you can click and hold the shift key and you can actually now smooth out the curve now and have a different looking curve. So if I did something like this and you're like, oh no, I don't like that. You can click and hold the shift key and see it's, it's actually shrinking the curve, okay? So how you pick up is important, all right? So as an example, let's start, let's start scratch, okay? So I'm just gonna say brush and I'm going to say two mesh so that we get this cylindrical piece, this cylinder piece. All right. So let's do this. Ready? Brush. And then, which is the B key. B, 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 um, And see my, uh, my little graphics blocking us. So the create insert mesh right here, right? That is what we want to use. In fact, also here, let me, let me see if I can move things a little bit. Hold on one sec. I'm just seeing about my streaming stuff, making sure. And let me see if I can move. I'll move my webcam a little bit because it's a little bit in the way. So I'll move it down. You know, I'm going to move it in the top corner instead, just because it's better there, I think. Okay. So, <clears throat> so you got the brush palette. Okay. And right here you have a create insert mesh, right? So I'm just gonna say, go ahead and create an insert mesh brush. And then I'm just gonna say new. And so obviously we're getting the same thing here. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you can grab one like this. So I can say brush, I'm gonna say create insert. On this time I'm gonna say append it. And then I'm gonna say, and then it's telling you, hey, hey, hey. This is like the, this is the, look at me, look at me inside of ZBrush right here, right? It's the, look at me, 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 look at me. Look at me. Inside of ZBrush, in essence, it's a note saying, hey, you can hit the M key um, to look at things, right? So this is before we made this, right? So you hit M as in for multi, and then a menu pops up. So there's two ways to just look at it. Okay, so then if I do one like this, okay, then I say, again, brush, create insert, I'm going to append it. Okay, and I'm going to skip that note. So in essence, now we have three different versions, Randy. Right, so if I go to stroke now and put curve mode on, okay, you'll see that when we draw this one out, you can see how that one's laying out, right? So they're just following each other. Then if we do this one, see, they're all facing upward now, right? And then if we follow this one, and then this is now they're all facing towards us. So to answer your question, rotating the mesh on the curve, you can't just rotate the meshes along the curve. There, there's no slider you can go to and say, hey, this curve, I don't like the rotation of all of them and how they're sitting. You have to actually make a version with the rotation that you want. Okay? Awesome. All right, I see that answered that question. Hey, Steve from Tennessee? Oh, I'm, I'm a massive Alien fan. In fact, I don't... I, I'm going to have to have a conversation with my dad about this because I remember watching Aliens, which I'm a huge fan of the first two, okay? Three starts to go around. I'm like, mm, not sure. Not sure about this. A dog alien. And then obviously after that, I think it just goes off 
off the reservation. I personally, personally, the first two do it for me. Uh, Ridley Scott, which by the way, fun filled fact for you guys. I have the alien book in here somewhere. I'm waiting for a new bookshelf. So all my books are stacked. So they're, they're a mess. That was his first movie. Like how depressing is that? Like really? That's your first movie ever. Alien. One of the best ever sci-fi slash horror films. Like give me a break. That's how talented that guy is. It's insane that that was his first move full length full length feature movie. I'm like, oh god, because he did commercials all before that, right? And if you go look at his film, then he was like hitting up. And then he had Blade Runner. And then he had Legend. I'm like, oh my god, he's so good. And then James Cameron obviously did Aliens, and I highly recommend all of you. There's a three hour documentary on YouTube. At least it was. I don't know if it's still there on Aliens. I seriously don't know how he made the film, got the film made because there was huge issues at that time with strikes and stuff and they weren't happy, like the crew on set. And like they were literally wearing t-shirts on set pretty much bashing the producers and James. And I was like, this is crazy. How are you guys being productive? So I recommend it. I watch, I love all that stuff. It really, it really gets me uh, excited. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Spotlight uh, I'm sorry, not Spotlight. Uh, yeah, Spotlight to just have this image always around me. So I want to have it available. I'm running out of real estate as far as the stream goes. But we'll make it happen. So I'm just going to export this image. Just so I'm going to just put it somewhere else in my space here. Like somewhere in my document. Just so I have a, I have a before. You know, what I was looking at. And then where I'm going. Thanks, Mike Morgan. <clears throat> Uh, so too cute to, uh, is there a way to make nano mesh randomize without the meshes overlapping each other? No, the randomizer is just not paying attention and trying to make things not overlapping. So if it's going to randomize, hold on, let me do this and then we'll go back to that question too. <laughs> we are just always filled with tangents here. I love it. Okay. So I'm just going to go to my document. Okay. And then I'm just going to export this. This is fine for me. I'm going to export that. Okay, and I'm going to throw it in this. Yeah, that's fine. I don't really care about the name. That's good. I'm going to go to my texture. Okay, and I'm going to import that and then grab that document image. So now it's right here in my texture palette. And you can see it's the same thing. Now I'm going to click it and I'm going to add to spotlight. Okay, so I'm just going to click that right there. And now you got like double wee right imagery happening here. Okay. So I like to just have this here, but one thing I also will do with a lot of images, I'm sure you guys have all done this where you brought in some reference images like me, I've got these books and everything. I'll bring, I like to do this with Spotlight. I like to bring images and have them scattered everywhere. Obviously I have graphics, graphical elements going on right now in the stream that limits. What's up, Vichar? How you doing, man, from India? How's it going? All right, so. I'm going to take this and then what I'm also going to do, let's just pick a different color over here. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to go and let's first make the opacity a hundred percent. Okay. So right now, obviously this is the matching background, but there's a lot of times you guys aren't going to have that. So what I like to do is this, I'll just, just visually, I'll just, I'm just picking a different color so you guys can see what's going to happen. And I'm going to click this paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is mask out portions of this with the color right so you can see that color where it's masking out things in essence so what i've done here i'll undo is i'll go a smaller brush size okay is i'm holding control and then clicking and then that will give me that so you can see i'm in essence in this image made that background be this blue now right and then my ships by itself so the beauty is if you guys switch to black and do that same thing we mask out the ship, right? So now what you have, and we'll go back to white, is an image, okay? That's just, you know, see? It's just free flowing. There's no background now to it. It's just literally the ship. So since since we got this up here, we will, I'll just put it right up here. I'm looking at it in the stream, okay. And then I'm hitting the Z key for zebra, okay? And then now that's just an image sitting there. But I, I, again, I use Spotlight across the board for doing all this. 
okay? So there you go. Now, back to this ship, and I'm gonna start doing some details and doing some techniques of where I like to go now. So you can see from the last stream, I started putting some detailing in the front of the ship. And so now I wanna start doing some panel lining. Like I wanna take that Sulaco idea, okay? And see what I can do with it, all right? And where I can go with it. Um, and the paneling that they put on all those. And I wanna start, that paneling is also gonna make things seem look bigger, right? To the viewer. Like right now, you don't know how really, how large this ship is. The only way to know that is I attach like a body, right? So, which is a good thing to do as well. That'll give the scale of this. Like this ship's massive, okay? In the scheme of things, this is a cargo ship that's that's porting soldiers, it's porting like tanks, cars. Like it's, it's not tiny, it's really big, right? So I gotta somehow show that in my model. So that's where we're gonna go down. Um, but I want to first answer that real quick question about nano, 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 okay? Um, and I, I talked a little bit about nano on Tuesday's stream as well, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> so here you go. So this is what we're going to do is I'm going to just grab an insert mesh brush I'm just gonna grab this primitives one. Okay, and then the B key again for brush and down here at the bottom, there'll be a create nano. So now that I have a nano, I've got this nano that has multiple pieces of topology in it, okay? So when I grab something, let's just grab this polysphere and I drag it out, this is what I'm getting, okay? So obviously if I hold space bar, what we're doing is creating a new Z modeler brush. So I got insert nano and I'm just gonna say all polygons. Okay, and so when you draw this out, you have that. So to the question that was being asked about randomizing, and the only reason why I wanna show this, because maybe some of you aren't even aware that you can do this with Nano. So in Nano, there's randomizing right here. So you can do randomness through here, right? So there's random distribution, okay? And then you have other different random seeding happening. And then what I like to do a lot of times is have the offsets be different, right? So I'll put a little bit of a variations in my offsets through here, right? So they're just sitting in different spots now in the world, right? And it's, you can do stuff like this with Nano. So unfortunately though, there is no way to tell ZBrush um, don't have any intersecting meshes, right? So to that question, they were asking, just so we have a visual, any spheres, that are intersecting, say like right in here, those two right there are intersecting. There's no way to tell ZBrush not to do that with Nano, okay? So I don't remember who was asking that question, um, but, and I just wanted to show this, make sure people understood what you were doing as well. Hey, too cute, it was you, right? Yeah. So this is how you would do it, um, randomness, uh, but, there's no way to know what's intersecting and what's not intersecting. So one thing you might want to do is you might be, you could use a, a plugin masking plugin, you know, so we have intersect and mask. That's a plugin you can download on off our website. Maybe you can use that. And then you'd be mask, be able to see mask wise, what's overlapping and then delete the overlapping mask point ones. That'd be a way to go about this. Okay. So moving on, um, Alex, you have a question about, can you please let me know if there is a way to have Boolean on and solo with dynamic on at the same time, Boolean deactivates the dynamic feature of solo. Uh, so wait, you wanna use, okay, so you wanna use, hold on, let me load something. Uh, here, let me just, let me just make something real quick. So I wanna load a project, you know what? Hold on, we're gonna save this real quick so I can come back to that real quick. Let me do a quick save on this. And I'm gonna now load a project that already is a live Boolean project. Uh, let's see, I gotta see where I can find it again. Oh yeah, maybe it was tools, shadow box remesh. There you are, hello. How about the Boolean folder, Paul? Wake up. Okay, so this right <clears throat> and then you have live boolean on right so this has got this has got dynamic on right this as far as dynamic sub dev right and it's got live booleans and then all your sub tools 
So if you're talking about solo, there's nothing you can do about this because what this button is doing is telling ZBrush to only show me the selected subtool. So all other subtools are hidden, which means all the subtools that also make up the live Boolean are hidden. So you can't have solo on and then see also the Boolean at the same time. We need, we need the other meshes. ZBrush needs to see the other meshes in order to give you the live Boolean result. And right now you're telling ZBrush not to show me the other meshes. So there's no way to do this. If, if, if I get your question of what you're asking. So, but this still has dynamic sub div on, okay? Um, and then it still has live booleans on, but the minute I hit that solo button, all else fails. And unless you're talking about the dynamic here in solo, that's more of a navigational thing. So especially for some of you, if you guys got really heavy pieces here, right? So um, this will allow you as you're trying to rotate, it can solo things out, right? So that's what this dynamic does, right, up here. Okay, so, um, but I'm assuming you were talking about the dynamic in subdivs. Yeah, then you're talking about this. Yeah, it's just, there's, I'll have to look into this. There's obviously all this that you're asking, like my booleans is actually a rendering state, right? This solo is actually a render state. So he's doing this where he has live booleans and you see as you rotate people, you can see how it only only shows one subtool, right? So that's because the dynamic is on in solo, but the minute you have live boolean on, it won't work. I'll look into that and see if it's something that we can make happen. So you can try you can try that, and well, I'll look into that and see if we can make something happen with that. Okay, so back to my ship. Boop, boop, boop. So. Let's do a quick save again. Let's grab that ship. This is the one I want. Okay, so I want to start now doing some paneling through here. And I want to start going at this with some panel loops and some things like this. So I want to start creating um, just examples. I want to start going a little nuts and figuring out. I'm not sure even where I want to go with these panels. Okay. So I want to start making some assets, a brush that allows me to do this. So I want to do something like what we're doing right in here right now. Okay. So, and I want to start putting that across the whole thing. Like IE, for an example, I want to start working with the wings, right? And maybe I want to start putting something on the wings themselves, right? And start going at it. So my wings are right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to append uh, a mesh. It doesn't matter what it is for me. Okay. I want to say that box, that's good enough, right? This isn't really going to be important where, what this is, where it sits and how large it is. Okay. Uh, Stefano, my Gundam is still going, but uh, I've been, it's almost done. Actually, I have something special going on with the Gundam. So, <clears throat> This is not really relevant, this piece of geometry that I'm doing. So I'm doing a technique that I've already showed several times in my streams. Um, but then I'm going to show you guys something I like to do when I'm creating panel looping or uh, IE, not just panel lines, but also you could do this technique and I'm about to show here in a little bit um, to do what they call uh, gribble, greeble, greeble on the size of the ship where it's got just a ton of stuff going on. I'll show you guys examples of all this. That's what this we're talking about here in the stream. Um, so your, to the question is the quick saves, they all get by default, get saved to your C drive in a folder that's in your public folder. That's where they all go. Um, let's see if I can, I can get you guys. No, nope, not this. You don't need that. Uh, I don't have a finder open one second. I will show you exactly. Okay, so in your hard drive, then you go to users, then you go to public, then you go to public documents. Okay, and then you're looking for ZBrush Data 2020 in this case. And then here's your quick saves right here. Okay, so this is where they get saved to. So you guys might want to monitor this and be careful because this is where this could also start eating up your hard drive space. Because if you look, I've already got over a, almost over a gig of quick saves. Right, and this could get really big, right? See, look at this one alone, 643 megabytes. 
Okay, so you can, so with that said, you can change the destination. So that's what this is, this quick save path text file. This is where you can just, so if you have another hard drive, you would just come in here and change your hard drive location and then just save that text file out. And then ZBrush will automatically create a quick save folder and start placing them in that folder for you. So this is a way you can go, okay? So that's where the quick saves are going to answer the question. <clears throat> so there y'all go. Hey Paul, I have a technical question. Uh, when I'm exporting a subtool to Maya, the subtools are getting flipped and all the polygons are separated in Maya. Uh, that sounds like, what's up RB Gaming? Uh, that sounds like, depends on how are you exporting. Number one, you could just use Go Z. Okay, and then that would be fine to work. Uh, so that would be one way to go is just use Go Z, send it over. You could use an FBX now. So when you export, you can export through an FBX. It's also, there's a plugin for FBX. The nice thing about FBX and Go Z is it'll send creasing from ZBrush to Maya and vice versa. It'll send your polygroups as selection sets to Maya. Um, all any maps that you have within ZBrush will get sent over and put on a material inside of Maya. So using an FBX and Go Z is better than an OBJ. I don't even use OBJs anymore really that much. The only time I use an OBJ is if I'm 3D printing. Because even now you don't even need an STL for 3D printing anymore. It's not really necessary. So, but anytime now I export a lot, I'm usually using an FBX. Or with Maya case, I just use Go Z and everything gets sent over. Uh, but it sounds like you might have something else going on that I would say create a support ticket and then you want to get assigned to a person that can help you out and ask more in-depth questions. Because uh, the subtools shouldn't be being flipped and the polygon separating in Maya, that's, I don't know what that is. That's something else sounds like. Something else is going on. So we would need to investigate with you. <laughs> Bless me. Could be just a setting that we have to find maybe that you have on. Okay, so. And the other thing, so that you might, where you might, where you're saying, okay, so where you're saying actually polygons are separated in Maya, I probably know what you're referring to. So your mesh that's a single mesh inside a ZBrush, is it going over to Maya and it's becoming multiple meshes? Is that what's happening to you? Because I can tell you exactly why that's happening. Um, when you export down here in the export options, there's options down here, okay? So this, there's a texture saying to export textures, there's a merge UV coordinates, and then there's a group export subgroups. So what this is doing is this is taking every single poly group, okay? And then when you import it into Maya, it takes each poly group and makes it its own mesh. However, there's a setting in Maya, you can tell it not to do that, and then the problem solves. That's what I do in my Maya. So in my Maya, when I launch Maya, there's an option in OBJ that you can just tell bring over as a single mesh. Don't don't split off in the groups, okay? So, but this is another reason why GoZ won't do that. FBX won't do what I just said. Or if you want to from here on out and you really love your OBJs, okay, you can come here to your Subtool Master and do an export here. And right here, you can tell it to just single polygroup for each subtool. And then that way your OBJs will get every single mesh or subtool mesh that you export will get assigned one polygroup. So then when you go into Maya, you don't have that problem anymore. So if that's what you're referring to, there's your, there's what I would do. I would either do FBX, go Z, right? Or in Maya, which is what I do. I just change the setting and tell it to ignore the polygrouping and then just bring in the mesh itself. But like I said, I prefer using the FBXs. That way my polygroups become selection sets in Maya. Okay, so back to this. Um, so I got this little cube here, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna call this wing sub, okay? And so I got my wings. In fact, I'm gonna create a folder. I want all my wings to be in a folder. Wing, I'm gonna call this wing parts, okay? <clears throat> So I like to really like to work in a folder and there's a reason for that. I like to be able to just live boolean certain elements. So I got this wings, I got this. I'm just gonna size this down just so it's tiny because I don't care about it, right? And then I'm gonna turn this into a subtractive. 
okay? Not attractive, but subtractive, okay? So you've got this little icon here, right? Which this is, this is a very important Lisa Needs Braces moment, people. Hence the crazy graphic, okay? So you put that sub on, okay, with this mesh, and because this mesh is actually smaller than really anything else in the scene right now, again, this is going to allow us, I'm just gonna grab the brush that's made for this, I am in Boolean, right? And so now anywhere I draw, right, I get this, okay? So if I wanna, here, well, I'll do, and I'll do symmetrically, right? So this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about which will start breaking up this wing, right? And then now maybe, you know, what if I brought it to the edge, right? And then maybe rotated it, and then also rotated this direction, right? Just boom, that alone starts breaking up the wing and giving it a little bit more life, right? So that's what I was doing up here. So what I want to now do is show you guys how I kind of like to use this technique and build a brush that maybe just like we have here, it just has a bunch of crazy different paneling. And then I want to build one that has a bunch of different gribbles, right? And then that way, as a user, I can just sit here and do literally what I'm doing. I'm just clicking, dragging. And then we're going to use features to kind of swap things out really fast, okay? So that's what we're going to go down the path. I'm going to show you a technique that I like to use. So have some orange juice, time to hydrate. Um, nice shadow. I've never used the plugin, so I couldn't talk about the plugin. So <clears throat> um, here's where we're, here's what I like to do. Okay, so I'm gonna make a plane. Okay, and I want to have some topology. I don't need a lot of topology on this. Okay, so I'm just gonna divide this a couple times. You know what? I'm gonna divide it also without without any smoothing. So I'm gonna turn off this SMT and then divide it. So I just get some more volume. Mm, I think I'm gonna go one more, say like, let there, it's 16,000, okay? And so what I wanna start using is saying the slicing curve, okay? And circular and things like that. So <clears throat> I'm going to start slicing. So I'm holding the control shift. Hi, Sad, okay? So now I'm gonna click this, slice curve. This is now going to allow me to slice across, right? And you can see it just slice across the topology and then I'm getting this, right? I'm getting this new topology like this and I'm like, okay, that's great. I love it. Yay. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to go, all right, I have the slicing ability. It's going to create a polygroup. This is creating a nice clean line for me, right? So both sides are nice and clean. And I want to do one more thing. So I'm creating panels for myself, right? So I'm going to say, let's do a B radius. So now when I slice, okay, I'm getting two slices. Two slices right there, right? Okay. So I want to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to find a draw size that I kind of like. Uh, 14. I need to go a little bit bigger. I, I think I'll go... Yeah, there, that's got some, that's got some meat on the, what they used to say, what is that, uh, meat on the tooth, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so, this is where we're going to go with this, right? And then to your question about the remeshing um, idea, there, like, there's multiple ways, this technique I'm about to show you, there's multiple ways to go about this. This is just a quick, nice way to do this, Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this several times. Okay, that's a, that's enough for now. Okay, and then we're just going to look at only one at a time. So as I cycle through these, you're going to switch between them, right? So now what I'm going to do is just, okay, I want to maybe do something like this. Uh, let's do a panel that comes straight down like that. And maybe let's do one that comes up like that. Okay, that, that one's good. I like that. Okay, so you can see every time that I go and slice, I'm creating new polygroups, right? So in essence, the really thing that I'm looking for right now is I'm looking at this. I want those. Those are my lines that I want to start using on my model, something like this, right? So I want to start using this feature. So hold 
control and space bar to get to B radius. Okay, so I'm just, I'm holding down control and space bar, which is the shortcut. Okay, that'll get you to that option. But if you can't remember, it's a brush feature. So it's in the brushes. So it's right here in the clip brush. Okay. So if you can't remember where it is, there you go. That's where it's at. Okay, so if you're holding space bar, that's gonna just move the curve. It's not gonna, it's not gonna do anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna say, okay, that's a good one. I'm gonna hit the down arrow key, and now all I'm at is like the next subtool, right? So I got this and then this, right? That's it. So I'm just using the up and down arrow keys, okay? Because I wanna just create some different ones in here. Okay, so I'm gonna say, okay, this. Now let's do one that maybe has multiple slices and on an angle, right? So maybe I wanna, or maybe do a slice that does something like this, that's kind of got an angle bend to it. And then maybe I slice down from here and then go like this, okay? I like that. Now I wanna slice from here to here. Okay, it's looking good. Now, because again that I'm slicing and I'm creating these new polygroups, the new polygroups are only generated when you cross the brush across the entire polygroup, okay? So because I know that, I'm taking advantage of that, right? So looking at this, you can see that this polygroup stayed that blue, right? So really, this is this is what I'm making right now, something like this, okay? Um, when you go to do this, though, right, you can see, look, there's more polygroups here, right? So now I have, you know, these polygroups, right? You can see there's now three polygroups here, okay? So if I didn't want that to happen, okay, which I don't, because what's really the point? I don't need this polygroup to change and this polygroup to change. That's not really necessary to do that, right? Oops, I changed my brush size. We want to keep your brush size the same. So what I do is I start inside the yellow and end inside that green, right? And then that's what I get, okay? So you can see this greenish and yellow didn't change color. So let's say if I want to do a, a diagonal from here to here, let's just say, I would start in the pink, right? So my brush, see the point is right here. So here, uh, let me put a magnifier on. So you can see that little red square. Oh no, you can't see it because my graphics in the way. There you go. Okay, see that red square where in the cross is sitting at? That's telling where the brush should start. And because I'm sitting on that pink one, it's gonna start there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I wanna start from the pink and come up here to this green and then go through this, right? So this becomes important, understanding how to do this, right? So as long as I don't cross over like this, I'm crossing over the yellow, so that creates a new polygroup, right? So this stays yellow and the other two become new polygroups, right? But if I was to do, say, something like this, right? See, the yellow didn't change, right? And then so now this panel is going to look like that. Right, so then that's what that panel looks like as an example, right? So what I'm gonna do here is just quickly go through and make a couple variations, okay? So I kinda, I like that one. I'm gonna move on to the next one, all right? And now I wanna do, let's do some other shapes. So I'm gonna grab a circle, okay? And I want that circle, so you can see it can be stretched and elongated, right? And then you can see it's got a double line in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this square option. Okay, so I'm holding down control and shift so I have this brush selected. Okay, and then I'm going to click on that stroke option and you can see there's a center and square option here. So center's already on and I'm turning on square. Right, and then now I only get perfect circles. Right, and now I got a double circle like this. Okay, so I want to now use this. I'm just looking at a question. How did I activate what? The extra polygroup you mean? What do you mean? How did I act? So uh, right now, I'm because I'm slicing, that's built into the brush. Okay, and then I have B radius on it, which is giving me the difference in size, right? Where I get in two slices, as an example. Okay, so what I want to do now is try a little, do a little something else here. I want to try a little experimentation. So I'm going to keep B radius on. 
I'm going to say, all right, let's make a slice there. And then I want another one that's kind of offset like that. Okay. And then I want to come down here and do those slices again. So I've got those exact same slices there happening more than once. Right. So what I'm looking for is this. I want those. That's what I'm going to use in my mesh as an example. Right. Okay. So how I'm doing this is I'm going somewhere else on the plane and then I'm hitting a shortcut. And what I'm doing is I'm telling ZBrush to, hey, repeat those last strokes I made. And in this case, I made two strokes, right? So I did multiple slicing. So this is a great way for me to, hey, maybe I find something that I really like, I can repeat it somewhere else on the mesh, right? And so what I'm using is a feature that's so brand new, it is like 18 years old. Uh, in the stroke palette, what I've been using is actually this inventory, right? So you can see the stroke count is sitting at two, right? And I did uh, a two, an un and de, right? So I did two strokes. So it'll allow me to duplicate this, right? So as an example, just again, so you get your head wrapped around this, I'm going to keep this one because I kind of like it, all right? I'm going to come back to this and say, okay, I'm going to do, let's do multiple strokes, Okay, and I'm gonna turn B radius off. I'm gonna say, okay, I want this. Then I wanna do one like, let's say, kind of off-centered like that. Then I want another smaller off-centered one. Let's say like that. And then another one, even tinier, a little bit tinier like that, right? And so now I can go anywhere else, right? And I can tell ZBrush to redo those. Right, so I'm just redoing those and I'm using the shortcut. So what's happened here is I've got four strokes that are being recorded and then I'm just telling them to repeat that pattern, right? So of course, what I'm doing is I'm using shortcuts. So I know the number three turns on record and you can see stroke counts gets now to zero. So now ZBrush is just looking, okay, I'm ready to record any stroke you make. Okay, and please keep in mind that a rotation in the document or canvas is a stroke. Okay, because what ZBrush is actually doing, this is the beauty, it is looking at where your cursor is within the document, and anytime you do a movement, it's going to record that. So what's really nice about this, okay, so let's let's just take this in one more step further, all right, just so everyone can understand what's going on. Okay, because right now I'm using with slicing. But people, we could use this with anything. So let's load a let's load a sphere here. Okay, and let's give it some subdivision. There we go. Just a little bit. Okay. And I'm gonna say let's do some clay build up. Okay, and we'll go with a little bit bigger brush size. Okay, and I'm gonna hit the three key. I'm in record mode now. And I'm gonna say, okay, let's make sure also in the brush, since I'm using spotlight. In samples, let's make sure to tell it, hey, I'm just using that image in the top left, okay, as a way to go. So I'm just going to now sculpt here, sculpt here, sculpt here, sculpt here, sculpt here, sculpt here, and then maybe this, and then maybe this, right? And then I'm going to hit the three key, okay? So again, I'm using the shortcut. So you can see there's nine strokes, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to say there is nine strokes here. This is the key thing, not brush. Okay, and then to Yetkin, to your question, no. There's no way to keep UVs when you're Z-remeshing. It's making a whole new piece of topology. So no, there is no way to do that. So the key thing here again, people, this is really, this is like a double. This is like a Lisa, Lisa needs braces moment on top of the look up here, look up here moment, okay? So this is for, I'm just going to throw in my other graphic now. The users from the 2000s. And if you're me, the users from the 80s, right? The real, the Tron of the 80s. Okay, so again, the key word here, people, is stroke. So I, as a user, can actually switch to say something like the Damien standard, and then I can tell it to redo those strokes, right? And it's just reusing the strokes, but it's not about the brush. It's about the strokes, right? That's what it's about, okay? So, but this is recorded, so I can go anywhere on this, right? And then tell it to redo the strokes, right? And then redo the strokes, right? And so this first one was a navigation. See, because I navigated, that was recorded. 
This is the point I'm trying to say is that's a stroke. So again, if I hit record, and let's just say I do this, 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 and then maybe this, and then maybe this, right? And I hit three. So now the recording's off and I got eight strokes. I can say replay all, and now I've replayed all of them. And then that's the number two key for the shortcut. And then right next to that is replay all relative, which is the shift two. So that means I can move my model and just put my cursor somewhere else and we'll redo the strokes. And again, if I now go and switch to this and I say replay them, I just did the clay build up over top, right? The Damien standard. And now I can switch back to the Damien standard and do this. And then I can switch to maybe, maybe you want to switch to an inflate and then now they're inflating, right? So in the same spot, okay? And then of course now I can move my model around wherever my cursor is and hit shift two and you can see it replays them. So if I Damien standard it, shift two, right? Shift two, and then there you go. All right, so that's all I was doing with the planes over here. That's, that's what I was doing, okay? So let's go ahead and let's make some more stuff here. So I'm gonna turn my B radius back on uh, I'm gonna go with a draw size a little bit. So this I'm gonna go 30. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. I definitely want to circle, and I want to do say that, and then I'm gonna switch to, let's say the slice curve, and then I'm gonna draw a curve like this straight across, right? And you can see what I get, okay? And then I can come here, and I'm gonna say, okay, let's make another one. Let's go here. I like that. Okay, straight across. So again, what's important to me is that. That's what's important to me is something like that. So I'm gonna say, I like that one, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is just continually doing these on different planes, right? And I'm gonna come now finally here and say geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. So the only thing that's left are is this, these lines that I've been making, right? So I'm gonna continue this down and now another way that I can do this, because this could be beneficial for me, maybe I'm trying to get some kind of pattern through here as an example, okay? So I'm gonna say, all right, I got this plane. I'm gonna hit the W key or W-W, all right? And then I'm gonna hit this gear. And then I'm gonna go, okay, let's do multi-slices, okay? And then now I can say, what do I want, okay? What's my slice width, okay? What resolution do I want? So I'm gonna go a little bit bigger here. And let's just slice across like this. And then now see, I can move this in different locations, right? And then even here, you can apply a creasing if you want, right? So now I've got a creasing and I've got this. Okay, so it's multiple slices across. So what I like to do also is say, okay, how about I'll do just instead of multi, I do one, okay? And now you have inflating ability, I have a creasing ability, and then right here you have symmetry ability, right? So I'm gonna say what my slicing, and I'm gonna say, let's go across here, and now I got two, right? And you can see this can be adjusted. So I can adjust on the fly and say, okay, let's make something like that. Okay, and then the blue dot is where do I want it to sit? And I can go in both regions. So I can do this and now tell it to also symmetrically. So now I've got symmetrically X and I've got symmetrically Y right now, right? So that's what this green cone is doing. It's saying to do the slice. And then I'm saying that slice actually should be two. So it's the same thing I'm doing with the brush. I'm just now doing it in this. I'm doing it in this thing, this uh, deformer, <laughs> like my words got away from me, okay? And now I'm telling it to do symmetrically, right? So this was equ equidistant. So as I move this blue dot, see they're staying equidistant. And as I move this blue dot, they're staying equidistant. So I can create some cool stuff like this, right? And I say, okay, I like that. That looks good, looking good. And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's accept that. I accept it. Right? And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's do some other slicing here, right? So you can control it with this. So if I hold, say, the Alt key, 
Okay, this is gonna allow me to move the gizmo where I want, right? So if I hold the Alt key, right, I have free movement. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the Alt key and then just rotate this. And I'm gonna put it at a 45 degree angle. So I did that by I'm holding the Alt key now with Shift, okay? And then that we're gonna have that ability right there. Randy, if I wanted an edge, perfectly in the middle of this plane, I would just use mirror and weld to do that. That's it. The mirror and weld would solve that problem for me. Because mirror and weld is going to, in essence, cut across the middle. That's what I would do. For your question. He was asking, Randy was asking, is there a way to do your slice aligned center of the plane? Well, it starts at the center of the plane, right? So when I go here now and I say slice, you can see the bounding box. You guys look, see the bounding box? You see it's on a 45 degree angle. You see that blue dot? It's at the center. It's where the center of the mesh is, right? So it's already sitting at the center, okay? And so now if I say, if we'll turn off symmetry and then just say this, okay? And now I can actually do slicing like this as well, right? And I can say, um, let's do that symmetrically and maybe not so much, maybe something like this. Right, so now I'm doing these slices. So in essence, this is what I've now made. Something like that, right? It can get pretty complicated, right? So I I don't like that. Okay, so we can do something like this. And I can say, well, how about we experiment and we just say auto polygroup, right? So in essence, every polygroup now has its own here, right? And then now just looking at that centerpiece, I want to do some other slicing through here. So I'm going to come back to this with B radius. Okay. And I'm going to say, all right, let's go ahead and slice once there. And then I want it again there, again there, and again there. Okay. So now if we look at this, all right, we hide the pieces again. This is what I've now created. Right, it's something like this as an example. So this is gonna allow us to do quite a bit. I kind of, you know, I'm just trying to give you guys ideas of how we go about this. So I kind of just want those, like that's all I want. I want something like that, okay? Because I'm gonna be able to play with this. We're not done, we're, we're don't forget, we're gonna, I'm gonna do something later on with this, okay? So now I'm gonna say, okay, from here on out, when I have what I want, I'm gonna delete the hidden portion. So now I start to generate, you can see, so if we go back now to these and say, okay, he really wanted that, okay? And I'm going to delete hidden. Then I'm gonna use arrow up key, okay? And then I wanted that, delete hidden, use arrow up key, and I wanted that, okay? And then, delete hidden, right? So I am generating different types of slicing through here, okay? So let's keep making, so let's make another one here. I'm just trying to, trying different things. So we can put maybe, maybe I want one with a, a wave in it, maybe. Mm, I don't, for what we're doing with this ship, I don't think that's a good decision to put something wavy in it, okay? So I'm gonna stay very just crisp and hard edge here. And let's add, maybe now, let's do a slice rectangle. Let's maybe add some rectangular shapes, which, right, I could actually also just do things like this as well as another way, right? So I'm making a new polygroup, and then I'm just shrinking, right? And then now you can see that this is what I'm making myself, right? Something like this. It's just other ideas here. I'm trying to show you other ways to go about this. Okay, Mike, go do your dishes. Okay, um, so let's just keep going here. I'm going to, let's do some more shapes. Let's get back to this. I'm gonna stick with just my slicing curve. I'm gonna say I'm gonna make a slice along there. Let's make a slice here. Okay, so that's good enough. I like that. Delete hidden. OK. 
coming down. Oh, I'm all out, see? So I have all these pieces now, right? So I got all these different pieces. Okay, and what I wanna to start to do now is start using these, okay? Um, number one, I would probably take the time to name these. So we'll just call this graphic zero one and then going down the line because I'm naming these is because we are gonna turn these into a brush, okay? And the name is what's going to be put in the brush itself, right? So I might as well do a practice of making sure I'm renaming everything to what I want number I'm at four, okay, four. Okay, and just going down this and having these be different names, okay? so. You guys get the idea here. I would just keep going along this process and I might do 20 of these, I might do 30 of these. Like you can see how simple we are. This is really a simple way to go about this, okay? Now the next step I need to do is I need to create some volume here, right? I need this to have some type of thickness to it. Right now it's just a plane because I used a plane, right? It's just, there's nothing, there's no volume here. Okay, and I need to put some volume on this. No Dark Knight, no. Dark Knight's asking, or am I the owner of ZBrush, me and Joseph Dress? No, no we're not. <clears throat> ah, Jimmy, great question. So Jimmy's asking a good question that I actually, sorry, we gotta do this. This is actually a fantastic tangent. All right, so this is a great question from Jimmy. He's actually stumbled upon a feature actually all right so here we'll grab a plane make that a poly mesh and again because i use this plane i knew i took it right well not that high i took it to level three so this is what i've been working with there's only sixteen thousand polygons right so <clears throat> now what i'm going to do is answer his question to where he was slicing and you were doing this and like say you were doing this kind of Kind of liking this one. That's actually, you can hold the shift key to snap to an angle. So I'm gonna say 50 degree. Then I'm gonna come across here. And then I'm gonna cross here. And then I'm gonna stay at a 50 degree. So I know those are parallel with each other. Okay, so now that you've made these groups, when you guys go to select polygroup, there's actually a feature, all right? And I'm gonna zoom in here, okay, and get closer. Get a little closer, don't be shy. Okay, so we've got this green, we've got this pink, and we've got this brown tannish color. Let's just say, let's call it tan, okay? So if I hold down Control Shift and click on that point, you see I get the pink, right? And if I hold down Control Shift and click on the pink again, it flips the selection. So in essence, I'm telling the pink to now be hidden and show me the rest, okay? So if I come though and see this point that I'm on right now, this one right here, so I'll turn the magnifier on, that point right there. So look right above that cross. That point's actually sharing three polygroups. So if I click on this, I get all three polygroups because there is no way we can code something to know what polygroup you want. So what we've done is that vertex point that you clicked on, Okay, well then we'll only give you all polygroups that are connected to that vertex point. So i.e. then if I came here and clicked on any of the vertex points along the side here that are sharing the pink and yellow, okay, or looks like it's beige on a different monitor. If I click on that, right, I wanna click on a point that they're shared, right? And see now they're both showing up. So that's all you've done, Jimmy. You're just clicking on a vertex point where we don't know what polygroup to give you, so we give you both, or all three, or all four, whatever whatever the case may be, okay? So that's, you've actually, that's a feature. So if you stumbled upon an actual feature set. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I like this one, I'm gonna add it. I wanna add it, so I'm gonna append this, yeah, it's just something different, and let's, let's stick with my naming convention that I've been doing here now, graphic zero seven. Okay, so now I've got all these pieces, right? So if we turn all of them on, right? They're all sitting in the same spot, right? They're all sitting here. And what I wanna do, okay? Sad, go, go ahead, go ahead, ask a question about 
whatever you like. That's what this is all about, too. Making sure you guys, I'm answering questions that you guys might have. Uh, if the polygon is big, oh, you're, so you're saying, you're talking about, then I would do a selection ability with just the selection. So Jimmy's now bringing up, Jimmy's expanding upon his question, right? So he's saying, what if the, it's big, right? So I'm assuming then he has something like, let's say, let's say this cube, right? So you got bigger polygons, right? And then you're trying to select, say, just this face, right? In here, or let's even, let's go even like this, right? And now you just want only the red one, like this, right? It's gonna be very difficult, right? Because there's no point in the middle of the face. So in this case, I would use a selection, and then now I just get the red. Like, that's the only way to go around that. You we It, it needs a vertex point in order to do something, right? So that's what ZBrush is sculpting on, is actually not faces, it's sculpting on the vertices, right? So it's gotta have a vertice in order to select. So because there's no vertice here in this red face, there's there's no way to select just the red face polygroup wise. So you gotta then do other selection. And so all you do is just make the selection, right? Make sure the whole red part is in the selection. That's it, that's all you would have to do, okay? It's the only way around that, okay? And by the way, people, do you guys seeing this? Look, I have the slice and then I'm switching to the select rectangle. I'm switching back and forth between two brushes right now without actually going to the brush palette. That's a feature as well, which I find myself using, like in this situation where I want to continue using the slice, but I need to make a big, quick selection like that. Okay, so that's actually the control key. I'm just tapping the control key. Right, something like that. Okay, so back to this. All right, so my next step here is to create some volume. Okay, so I want to do some on purpose things here. So there are many ways for us to get some volume, right, to this. I could just come here and then I can come down here at the bottom, say extract and hit extract, okay? And then it saying, okay, well, the active mesh is fully on mass. Would you like to continue anyways? I say, okay, right? So here, if we go from a side angle here, right, you can see I'm getting a thickness there. Right, so I've got a nice thickness right here. So if I accept this, right, what it does is creates a new subtool that looks like this. Okay, and now I've got some volume there, right? I'll let it save. Okay, and so now I have is that, and that's kind of what I'm trying to go for. Hey, how are you? So, um, it's just creating, as you can see, a new subtool right below the graphic one that I made. Okay, so this is just great. Yay! It's just straight in line. So, for example, this is where I'm going to start wanting to go with this. All right, just everyone buckle up right now. <whistles> Click it in. Okay, I'm going to make this an insert mesh brush really fast. I want to show you where my mind's going with this, and then I'm going to show you the things that I'm going to run into and then how I can get around the things that I'm running into, all right? So I'm gonna say B for brush. I'm gonna say create insert. I'm gonna say new. So now I have is this, okay? So now if I go back to my ship, if you remember, I'm trying to do things for the wings, right? I'm just trying to make the wings look a little bit more cool than what they look like now, right? And right now I'm on a sub tool that's set as a subtractive, okay? So when I draw something out, it's gonna be subtractive, okay? now. I'm gonna draw this out and you can see nothing happens. But something did happen, right? It did get drawn out. But the problem is the depth of this is not right, okay? It's not the depth that I want, okay? So what I need to do is here in the brush palette, okay, in the depth, you can see the embed is set to two right now. So I probably wanna even just probably set this to negative two, okay? And then that way, when I draw out, you can see I'm cutting in to now the wing, right? And I can say, you know what, maybe not a negative two, maybe let's just go zero. What does zero do? Because maybe how, that's going to pick how deep do I want it to go, right? 
mm, maybe that's a little too deep. So I'm going to go and embed one maybe. Because I want this to, yeah, I just want this to be a simple cut through here. Right? And then now I can move this as well in space if I want. And go and see, start doing things like that. Okay, now. The thing you have to understand here is we are using live booleans. It's giving me the ability to cut things, right? Um, the topology that's being used, right, is the topology from all my slicing, okay? So if I go back to what we're looking at again, going back to this, and now let's look at closely at this extracted piece. You can see all the topology is all we did was I told it to extract from the graphic seven and then just give me a thickness. Okay. What I want to do now is add something to this. So the extract is going to do something for me. It's going to give me polygroups. Okay. It's going to maintain the polygroups that I have. Right. And then it's also going to give me a new polygroup in the middle. Okay. So as an example, if we delete this one now, let's delete this. Okay. And let's go back to this, the, the graphic again. Right, and I'm just gonna make, I don't need this all to be a different polygroup. I, I, it all can be one polygroup now, right? I don't need the various polygroups. I just need one right now, okay? And then so when I extract and I accept, now we get something like this, right? So we've got purple, purple, and this. So I can, in essence, hide pieces here, right? So I'm hiding this. And you can see with this on, the extract is going 50% on the top and 50% on the bottom, which actually is a benefit for me. I kind of like that, right? So where that flat plane is, where I made that initial cutting, the surface is being generated above it and below it. So in essence, this plane now is sitting in the middle of the extract, okay? So this is, this is actually very important for the way we're going to use it, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to do an edge loop. Okay, so now what I have here is another set of polygroups. So I, and then I'm shrinking it. Okay, and then now I want to do another edge loop and I want it to kind of go out. Right, so what I've done here is I made a, sh I did a shortcut again on you guys. Right, I'm just clicking shortcuts. You know, learning shortcuts and making your own shortcuts is obviously better, very beneficial. Okay, so this is definitely one of these moments that I'm going to go ahead and put her on. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the minute here. You know what's coming possibly next. Hence why I'm getting some OJ. Okay. Don't look up here. Okay. Look up here. Okay, so what I've been using actually is found here in edge loop. Okay, so right here, edge loop. And you can see the shortcut. Yeah, it's control E. Okay, so this is, that's all I did. So here, we undo this. Okay, to back to just looking at just this polygroup. Okay, if I hit edge loop, you can see I get the same thing. And then what I did is I shrunk it, that selection. So I know that when I click that button, I'm going to get a new edge loop, in, uh, edge loop in the middle that's perfectly parallel. Right, and then I know this feature is going to create a new polygroup in the middle and then new polygroups out in the end. In essence, that's what it's going to do, right? So I would like to do a little bit more than that, okay? So here's where you guys can start experimenting. Let's let's duplicate. Let's just um, let's experiment, okay? Because I'm gonna keep. I'm showing you guys my workflow. That normally this only takes me like to make this brush. It's only gonna take me maybe 20 minutes, not even. All right. So here we'll duplicate another one of these because I want to show you various ways to look at this, okay? So we'll call this extract four. That sounds good. We'll keep it as extract four. All right. So I'm going to turn on my display properties and double, 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 just so you guys can see it all. Okay. So let's do an edge loop. Okay. So control E, control shift S is shrink. So all I did was click in the tool palette. There's a visibility menu. Okay. And you can see there's a grow and a shrink. So you can see control shift S, right? So here, if I turn this off. Okay, so you can see Control Shift S is a shortcut for that, and you can see Control Shift X is grow. Okay, so I'm just using the shortcuts because Control Shift has to do with selections, right? And so now I'm going to come back to this, 
And this time, because I'm only showing this new polygroup that's in the middle, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, you know what? I wanted to displace outward the next edge loop. Okay, that's that's pretty extreme, Paul. Yeah, that's not bad. Right? And then now you have this. Okay? And you can see there's a little bit of a beveling happening there, right? You can see there's a beveling there. Okay? And that is being caused by this displacement. Okay? So I'm displacing out. So I'm actually creating a new edge loop, but telling it to actually push it out and then actually shrink it a little bit, the new surface, right? So think about these, this, what we're looking at right now. It's taking those polygons, making another extrude out, but then shrinking a little bit the extrudes, and that's why you get a ramp. So if I was to turn on crisp and do that same thing, you can see you don't get, right, that. You just get straight out, okay? So I'm going to make one here with crisp on, off, I mean, so that we have this, okay? So there's one. Right now, let's go back up to this one that I duplicated. Okay, this one right here. And this time, let's just do the green here in the middle, right? This green one. Let's do a displacement edge loop. Let's go a little bit more than that. Yeah, like that. Let's just do straight out like this. You know, I want to go a little bit more. Let's go 0.09. No, I'm going crazy. I want to go a little bit. Let's go to point one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now I have that. Right? So what's the difference for me? Okay, this is going to play a big role. So you can see what's happening here. What we're getting right now through here. Okay. So I'm going to say I've got this one and I've got that one. Okay, so I got two variations of this. Right, and this is for me setting myself up for making this brush down the line, right? So I'm going to turn on these two, right? Because they're both there, okay? And what I'm going to start doing from here on out now, when I start creating this brush, okay, I'm going to come here. I'm going to create multiple insert, okay? So when I click on that, ZBrush just grabs every single subtool automatically, right? And then you can see the names, why I, the names are important. Right, I can click and see visually what they are, but I also name them. Right, so now I've got extract three and extract four. Okay, so let's go back now to my ship and let's see what we're creating here. Right, let's go back to that ship. And I'm working on the wings right now is what I'm working on, right? That's the bottom. Let's look at the top. Okay, I don't like this. So this is the first one that we did, right? Which is just pretty much straight down scribe line. Okay, boom, straight down. Okay. And then now I'm going to say, all right, I want to try a new one. So here's a Strack 4. I already know I need to make the depth change. So I'm going to start at 0, okay? And then I'm going, to, I'm going to drag it out. And then now that's what I get. So you can see this one's creating like a double panel now, right? So if we go from the side, there's a little cut. See, there's your profile. So you see that? There's a profile there now. Right, so this is the one where I first, I extruded in, made two new edges, and then, then I pushed those edges out, right? I just went edge looped in first and then pushed out. So then I'm getting that look, which is pretty cool. I like that, it's pretty cool, right? And then from a distance, that's what you're gonna start making, okay? And now if I switch to this one and we go brush, okay? And I'm just gonna change this one to zero as well just so we have at the same, I draw that one out. And now this one is giving me that profile. Right, so you can see the differences in the profiles. They're subtle, but they're different. So this one's just going down, pushing in, and then coming across. This one's coming across, pushing down, and going straight across, right? So there's, in essence, two steps. There's two steps there. There's really one step here, right? So you can see, like, do I want to do to this, what type of paneling do I really want for this ship? Do I want something just straight like that? Do I want something that's got a little more to it like that? Or do I want maybe a little something is like that? Okay. And 
to Jimmy's question, he's saying maybe some curve brush with profile. Like this could be cool for cuts. You you could turn all this into a brush if you want to as well and have it duplicating along. That's easy to do. Okay, Randy's asking questions. Is it using Extract a better solution or Zmodeler to get better topology or is it better? Well, listen. Topology wise, yeah, right now to Jimmy's, to Randy's thing point, yeah, the topology is not good. So I'm going to go solve that right now. Right? You guys got to remember, we're in the ZBrush world right now. We're not in a box modeling world application. We're in a ZBrush world where we're going to divide things up into millions of polygons. Because I'm going to want to damage this. I'm going to want to paint this. Maybe as we move on here, right? So you got to remember all that. That there's, there's things down the road we're going to be able to do. To me, ZBrush is like a cake or like an onion or like... I always use cake. Or you're... Playing chess. I don't know if you've all, any of you have ever played chess, but when you play chess, you're not thinking about the move you just made. You're thinking about several moves ahead. And it's the same thing when I like to mess around inside of ZBrush. I'm thinking I'm going to use multiple features to maybe get a really great result. Right now, I just use multiple features to get a cool result with what we're looking at right now. Okay? Okay, so... So here we go. So to his point... Right, we have really bad topology, right? In the sense that there's a ton of triangles in here, it's ugly, blah, 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 right? So let's go back to the original graphic that we had, this, okay? So what we're gonna be able to do, right, is just tell ZBrush, okay, why don't we just remesh this? Okay, so I can go to geometry and then use the Z remesher. Right, and I'm gonna say, mm, let's start low. Let's go with a thousand polygons and remesh that. And then now we got that. Make sure I don't have any symmetry on as well. Okay, and start looking at what we can do to remesh this, right? So I'm gonna say, let's go, let's try lower. It looks like we've got an attachment issue in here that I need to see about maybe welding points. Okay, so maybe I want to say, maybe tell it to weld some points, making sure I don't have an issue with that, right? So this is just your target polygon count, right? And where you're going with this. I'm not sure why this is deleting. I'll have to look into this mesh, right? So the more you go, the more topology you're going to have, right? That's, that's what you're going to get, okay? So you can go up the line and then just start remeshing these. Right, so see this one's pretty dense. So I'm gonna say, I don't need that much. I can say I probably need maybe, let's try 500 and remesh that there, then that's good enough. Okay, so this is a way I can start quickly creating new topology, right? And then I can say, okay, remesh that one. Okay, I don't need that much. Let's go 500 and remesh that one. Okay, and then now I just, I'm going through this, through the gamut now quickly, just remeshing these. Right, which I could, if I wanted to, I could write something for, a, in essence, a, uh, a macro that does this for me. Okay, so you can start remeshing based upon this. You're just going through these and then you're just remeshing them, right? So you can just stick with the defaults and then just go with the defaults, right? Because again, you're in the world of ZBrush, so does it really matter? Right? I'm not sure why this one's deleting. I'll have to look at that into that. It's strange that that's happening. I'll have to save I'll save this out so I can take a look closely at and see why we're getting that issue. Okay, so it's just straight defaults. Okay. So now that you have some I have some with good topology, okay, I can now do the extracting thing. But what might be better for you? Okay, is using a different route. Okay, and it's using panel loops. Okay, the reason why I might want to use panel loops because all the experimenting that we did. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta take my hoodie off. I'm getting warm. Getting warm in here. Yes. Now we're down to a t-shirt. Now I'm, I'm just a walking billboard now. Zebra's hat, zebra's t-shirt. Okay, so. <clears throat> panel looping, if I click it, it's automatically going to do everything for me, right? 
I'm getting already a thickness, I'm getting multiple polygroups, and I'm already getting a profile. Okay? So, number one, one, the defaults, it's doing too much smoothing. So that's what this is. So maybe you want to turn that off, and then now I just get that. So in this case, I don't want any smoothing, right? I just want some thickness there, okay? Then I'm going to say, okay, I want a little bit more thickness. So let's go 0 0.03 and then pen a little bit. Okay, there. Now I've got something with more volume to it, right? And you can see I've already got a profile here, okay? I've already got polygrouping going on, okay? And I can even say regroup the loops, right? I can tell it to regroup the panels. So there's a bunch of things that we're going to be able to do here, right? So number one for this, what I'm trying to do, I'm turning the polish off, okay? I don't want any polishing. Because it's also, it's, it's pretty low in topology. It's only 687 polygons, right? Uh, I'm going to say 0 0.02, I think, because I point, yeah, that's a better thickness, okay? And then now, do I want this profile, right? Or do I want a different profile, okay? So then I'm saying, all right, I want maybe an elev I want a profile that looks a little different. So I'm going to come in here and just make some dots like that, right? And then panel loop it. And you can see now you're getting a different profile in there. And then you got to remember how you're drawing this out. You're going to be grabbing, if you're going to pull from this direction, right? Then the profile that's going into the mesh is going to be the one here. This is what's going into the mesh, right? So that's important to understand is where that profile is going to have is going to happen right so then i'm going to say okay i've got one two three four five six dots and my loop slider set to five by default i would say put your loop slider to at least the number that you have here and i say panel loop it and you'll get a little bit better of that panel loop and then for my case the bevel i'm going to say give me 100 percent strength and then now you're getting a panel that looks like that. Right? So it's a really strong panel. So now this is what I have. Right? So I got the bottom doing that and then it's coming up. So I can reverse horizontal panel loop it. Right? And then now I have that. Okay? Now, the other thing you got to see here, if I'm going to undo and redo... Okay, you see the panels? See where, how they're being generated? Right? Look at the plane here, right? I'm gonna keep my cursor there, okay? And then undo, okay? And then redo, oops, right? So undo, redo, undo, redo, right? So you can see the panel's going up. Right? So what I want to do is, if you remember, we're going to be using this to draw down, right? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to change my elevation. And I would prefer to be at zero elevation, which in essence is no pushing up the surface. Just push it, do exactly what extract does. Where that plane is, put some above, put some below, right? So now when I pan a loop, you can see Right? See where my cursor is right now? And then see when I create the panel, see that cursor is sitting here in the middle. See? So if I don't move my cursor, you can see how that's doing. So that's important to me because I know I'm going to go and draw this out. Okay? And then there you have it. And you can store these panels these panels, there is a plugin that allows us to store all this paneling if you want as well. Okay, I could even just create a macro that sets all this and then it automatically does it, right? But you can store this if you want to. There's a plugin that you can store, which again is found. Hold on, let me get my, my browser. Okay, so if you guys again go to pixelogic.com 
Okay, and then you're going here to support, and then you're gonna go to resources, then you're gonna go right through here, you're gonna go through the plugins, right here. Okay, and then now you're just gonna to scroll towards the bottom. Okay, and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, right here, panel loop presets. So you could actually download this plugin, and then you can save these presets. So you could save what I'm doing right now and put it in this plugin, right? And then there, it's there, and you just click a button and it does it every single time. And then that way you have that panel for this entire ship. And so anytime you, oh, you wanna make some more panels, easy, right? So this would be a way I would store different types of paneling happening through there. Okay, so, <clears throat> so moving along, so then what I'm gonna to wanna to start doing for, for the sake here, okay, I'm just gonna copy this graph. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the next one. I'm gonna paste it, right? I have the bevel at 100. So this is what the plugin will help you with. I don't have to go and change all the settings now that I've changed. They would all just store, right, in there. So then there's that one. Okay, and then I wanted a panel of six because there's no saving out the panel looping and it's per subtool based, right? So that's what's happening here. So paste and then panel loop it. Oh, that's ugly topology. I gotta go fix that topology in there. Okay, and then I want six here. So the plugin would have been a better approach to this for sure. Um, so I'm gonna make a couple here just so you guys can get what my next step will be. And then panel loop it, yeah. And then here, then I want a six loops. Then I did a 0 0.02, then there, and then I want bevel 100, I want my elevation there, and then paste it, and then panel loop it. And then go to this one. Okay, this is my last one. And then 0 0.02. Okay, and the thing here is I'm setting myself up for when we go now actually turning this into the brush, okay? We've got all these subtools, right? So I'm gonna look at it from this direction. Again, I'm gonna go brush, and I'm gonna create a multi-insert, right? So we don't, well, we can keep these extracts in there, that's fine, we can keep the extracts. Okay, and then now that creates the new brush, right? And so coming back now to my ship, and coming back to the wing, right? Let's undo this one now. So now that we're back to just this element, okay, I wanna now set my depth, right? And because the panels are all the same, the depth might, depth might be the same, but I might not have to do anything, right? Depending on what I do. So see, I drew it out and the depth, not what I want. So I'm gonna go brush, I'm gonna try zero first and see, is that what I want? Yeah, that's what I want, I like that, right? So this little panel I did has created a nice little softness to this paneling. So there you go, that's what I want, right there, perfect. Okay, that's what I'm looking for, okay? So then all I have to do now is I go to each one of these, right, and set my depth for each one of these where I want them. Brush. Okay, you're just gonna go to each one of these and set your depth that you want. Okay, another way to go about this instead of having to use your depth is in the paneling, that elevation slider that we had, you could just use that and make elevation go down right from the get-go, right? So what I mean from that is when we were creating these, right, remember when I was doing the undo, redo, undo, redo this? Realistically, it would probably be easier for me to make this elevation be a negative, right? So I would probably do like a negative, I don't know, 20 or something like that, and then create the panel loop, right? And then this is pushing down more, right? So you have this elevation ability right here, right? So what happens is where that line is, it's making more of the panel to be made more of the volume to be below the original plane, than above. When you have it at zero, 
okay? It's doing 50 per 50, 50. So where that line is of the plane, okay? 50% of it goes above, 50% of it goes below. When you go elevation 100, everything sits above. When you go elevation negative, everything sits below, okay? So the benefit of me doing this in this way is I'm not sure what I want for panels. I'm really not, okay? So I got this subtool selected. I just draw this graphic out and I say, okay, that looks cool like that. Okay, maybe I do like that. This I can extend, so I'm gonna need to make this longer. Okay, which is going to be easy for me to do, right? So I would look at this. So if I look at just this piece, right? I just wanna extend this out, right? So what I would do is unmask a portion like that. Switch to the gizmo, right? Hold the Alt key and snap along the points along here, right? I'm just snapping along these points right here, okay? And then now everything else is masked, right? And then now I just extrude. And then there you go. So now it goes all the way to the end, right? And see something like this, I didn't, I, I wouldn't know like this line and kind of digging, I kind of like that it cuts through there. I, I, I wouldn't have known that until I start laying this out, okay? Yes, and live boolean absolutely works with a ray mesh, 100%. I use that all the time. Okay, but this is why I also like maybe paneling things like this, is I can now say switch, right? And now I'm in, in the gizmo mode here, right? And I'm gonna say, okay, here, and then just try a different one, right? You can swap between these in essence, right? And you can see how you pick up is important. So right now, you see what they're doing? They're going through and swapping through them. And this is important, the gizmo, when you're gonna do this. So right now, you can see the blue arrow, it's facing this direction, right? So when we pick these up, we pick them up from looking above in essence, right? And so the brushes are always gonna think, okay, you're gonna be pushing these in the Z direction. So what I might need to do is change my Z like this, so that when I go through and swap, you can see I'm still getting the cut lines that I want, right? So you can see, here's this cut line now, right here, see? So I have that cut line, and then I can just swap between them and find the line that I like. Right, and then this wings also on an angle, right? It's on an angle there. Okay, so this opens up now. Okay, I can do that one. Then what does this one look like if I draw this one out? Maybe if I throw a little circular ele element in there. Do I want something like that in the wing? Maybe let's grab, let's grab this one now, maybe. Okay, I gotta figure out the depth of this one is different because that, that one was a little different. So we'll go negative two. And again, this is sitting somewhere in the space, right? So the idea here is now I can take this brush and continue and say, let's go to your point of a ray mesh. Okay, this piece right here, right? is on my middle portion oops and i have it here right so this is it right here right so this is being arrayed right so i could do something like all right i'm gonna come in here let's insert let's insert another shape let's do the same workflow it doesn't matter what it is a cube's fine right? And I'll just move it right here. Okay. Another way to do this, if we delete this, you guys could just come in here, right? And I can just say duplicate this. Right. And then now I just say, let me just replace this array with something else. So I'm going to turn on gizmo and say cube. And then now it's a cube that's sitting in here, right? So, so see, I have a cube now that's being arrayed. Right, that, 
that's all that's being arrayed now is this cube. Right? So if I like pull up on this, you can see that cube is being arrayed across with the same array, right? Because I copied the original array one, and then now I'm getting the exact same array. So of course now, if we do this workflow again, and I say subtractive, and I'm going to say symmetrical, let's go to this first one, and then let's just pull that out, right? And it might help if I didn't mask it. Right? And start looking at this and what I can start to do with this, right? Okay? So I'm just, in essence, see, instead of drawing them out like this on the cube, right? What I'm doing is drawing them out here and then looking for a surface to draw on. So I can do, say, something like that. Right? And now you've got this pattern right going across and this is symmetrical and then I can say uh let's just play with this pattern a little bit maybe I just want something like that right and is that too repetitive right this is the beauty kind of why I like this I'm just I'm messing around I have no idea what I want right now I'm just playing with ideas right now and seeing what what's working for me and what's not working for me Okay, so I can say already from this, I kind of only like this portion right here, right? I just like that little notch there. I don't like all these other notches here, okay? So there's something else we could do here with these. So we've been making these brushes with different parts and now I wanna, okay, I found the right beveling, the right things that I want, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna rip out, okay? from the brush and I'm going to make another type of brush like this, but I've, I've found the right, what I want. Okay. As far as the, the beveling that I've gotten, the distance that I've gotten, all that, all that figured out. Right. So I'm going to come to brush. Okay. And I'm going to say to mesh. So then I get the actual mesh. Right. And what I want is I just want a chunk of this. I want like, say, let's just say this. I don't even need this much. that's going to be enough right there. Okay. So I want this portion right here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the hidden. So I'm going to modify topology and delete hidden. So all I did was ripped out something from the brush and told ZBrush, give me that part of the brush. Okay. And then now I have this piece. I'm going to make this all one poly group. Okay, and I'm gonna turn on our display properties so you can see what we have here. Okay, so you can see the topology that you have here. In fact, I'm not gonna change the polygroups just yet. I'm gonna do this. And really, all I care about is this portion. This is the portion I care about the most. Okay, because that's creating that beveling, right? I don't need this part it's just creating a flat plane i don't want all i want is this okay so i'm going to delete that <clears throat> okay and i'm going to see if my handy delete loops will work for me here no okay so i'm going to say brush z modeler and we'll work symmetrically across the x i'm going to turn on local sim and i'm just going to get rid of the i don't need the spans across right now here not necessary. Okay, and then I'm going to say bridge. Okay, and I'm going to bridge across here. And then I'm going to bridge across from here to here. Okay, and it looks like I can bridge from here to here. Right? And now I want to start bridging across the other directions. Right? So I'm going to say Let's insert a single edge loop. Let's also switch our symmetry. Okay, so it looks like I need Y. Why you ask? Because I wanna create an edge loop through here, right? So I want an edge loop coming through here, right? So that's Y. 
So you could either go turning that on, or in my case like this, I could just throw on mirror and weld, right? And then there you go, it's on the other side. So I got it on both sides. Okay, and then now this, go back to bridge. Okay, and I want X symmetry again. Bridge across. Okay, and I'm just looking, okay, I need another edge loop, insert edge loop here. I need another one there. And then back to the bridge and bridge across and then bridge across. Okay, so you see he's making a triangle. So it'd be best not to make a triangle. I'm also, this is my ADD kicking in. I'm just gonna straighten that out a little bit. It really doesn't matter because the ends aren't gonna matter to me anyways. And I'm gonna say insert and I say, okay, I'm gonna put another edge loop here. And then now let's bridge across here to here. Oops. Bridge here to here and then here. Oh, I did a double bridging. Here to here and into here. Okay. And I'm going to make new poly groups. I'm going to delete this edge loop. And so this is what I have now. I have this shape, right? Oh, I need to do mirror and weld. I need the other side. Okay. Forgot to turn on the symmetry. So there, problem solved. So this is a closed surface now. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's make the size of this. Let's go into my preview window. Right. And you can see how tiny it is. I'm just going to go here and say unify. And just so it's a full piece like this. Right. And then now I'm going to say insert multiple edge loops. And I'm just going to insert multiple edge loops. So I'll say that looks good. Okay. And now I'm going to say, all right, let's shrink this down a couple times. And that's one. And now let's grab these. And that's another, one, right? So you can see what I have here now are multiple polygroups, right? And so what I really want to do is say, I want this top half to be one polygroup, okay? I want this middle portion to be one polygroup, right? And then I want this bottom portion to be one polygroup. I'm just hitting Control W to change the polygroups, right? So this is what I want. I want something like this, okay? And now that I have this, I want to use this, okay? To allow me to start doing more with this. So I'm going to turn this now into a brush. So I'm going to look at it this way. I'm going to say brush, create insert mesh. I'm going to say new. Okay. So then what I get is this, right? I'm going to turn symmetry off. I get that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's throw it along a curve. And then now I have this. Great. Okay. And then I'm going to say, okay, that curve has repeating elements, right? To it. So I'm going to say, all right, let's go to my brush palette. I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to turn on weld points and I'm going to put a little bit of resolution on this so that if I'm bending like that, I can get this, right? And so all I'm doing now is creating a brush that has now this that I can do anything with. And to this, to this point, I can also be here in the stroke and I can say as a line, and I can literally just draw out straight lines now, right? So if we come back again to my sh handy dandy ship here, right? And we come back to, let's go back to the wings. Okay, let's undo this. Okay, let's undo this. Okay, let's get back to this point. All right. And now all I have to do is click on the surface and draw out, right? And then now that's gonna draw this line. So I don't like the depth of that. I'm gonna go and change the depth of that. So it's sitting at 19. Let's just, let's see what happens at zero. Yeah, I like that, okay? I'm a, I'm a fan of that, okay? And then now you can just move this around, 
right? So in this space, move it wherever you want. And then I can rotate it however I want, right? Right, remember this wing is on a slant, right? It's got an angle to it, okay? And then so now I can tap, I can draw out another one maybe from there to there, right? And then just draw out and try different experiments and see what I get, right? And again, this is what I'm drawing out, right? I'm drawing out surface, right? That's going along here, okay? So of course then, if I turn off this as line, this will now also allow me to just draw freely, right? Which doesn't make sense for this ship. But then I have, I have that ability if I want to, right? I can draw like that if I want. Okay, so to the question about converting stuff for live booleans, this is why I like to use folders. Okay, so folders opens up more for me. So as I'm designing here and I'm throwing things and trying to panel things up and just put some detailing in here, maybe I, the wings is the only thing I want to convert because I want to do maybe something else. I want to use a different feature down the line, maybe something. Uh, so I like to use the folders, right? So just taking just these wings, right? If I click this little gear, I can tell it just Boolean only this folder, right? So I have dynamic subdiv on for this. So I can click this and it'll say live Boolean it and bingo, there are my final wings. So here are the wings ready to go. And you can see they've been divided up and the Boolean options have been done and everything's ready to go, right? And what it does is it creates a new sub tool within the same mesh that we're working on, but it doesn't get rid of the folder and it doesn't get rid of the meshes. I like that because there's times I'll start converting things and maybe I'll look at my my design again, I go, you know, I'm not feeling it as much or I want to make some changes. It's so easy for me to just now just delete this, right? And then come back and say, you know, this squiggly one is just silly. I want to get rid of that. Okay. I can come back and then we can come in here and I can say, delete the hidden. And then now I can just, again, put everything on in the folder. Okay. And then now do the exact same process again. And then now at least I have this, right? So it's a non-destructive workflow. I can always go backwards if I need to and go back to the point where I was at before I did the converting point part, right? Which is nice to be able to do this, okay? So it's nice to have this. And there are reasons why you're gonna wanna be able to do what you wanna do, right? I could, people realistically, if we wanted to, you know, another way that I like to sometimes to do some scribe lining is if I just take the, these wings, right? And I say, okay, dynamics on, and I apply them. So if you look, I've already got topology here, right? So I can just say, how about we take this polygroup, which is the important wing part. So if we just look at this, this is another way to go about this, right? I will then go back to what we've been doing, which is that slicing and say, okay, let's just start using that slice B radius, let's say, okay, let's go a little bit smaller. Okay, yeah, that looks good, okay? And then now I say, okay, I want, I want that, okay, in there, and then I want to go from, I don't know, maybe here to there. Yep, I, I gotta get used to a Windows keyboard. I'm usually on a Mac system. I keep hitting the other key. And then I'm going to say, okay, and then I want to go from here to there, maybe. I don't know, just something different, right? And then now I can say, hide these pieces, right? And then here, I, did, I didn't have symmetry on. Well, slicing is not going to work symmetrically anyways. And now there are my slices. And in this case, I did it on the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing. They already are following, right, the direction of the wings that that angle I put on the wings as well. And now you guys can just pretty much do the thing that we talked about, come in here and hit the edge loop if you want to. I can say crisp in, right? And then there's a panel there. Now let's go a little bit deeper, right? And then there's that panel, right? And then there you go. So I could just go this route too. 
But going this route, I got to divide up the mesh, right? So which means is I now got destructive, which means I've divided up, I've deleted subdivision levels, and now I'm slicing it up. So there's no going back that I can go, okay, I no longer like this. So if we do a, we'll do a mirror and weld over this. So let me just do a quick mirror and then mirror and weld, right? So now that I have them on the, the wings, I might come to the point where, you know what, I don't like that design on the wings anymore. Now I've got a problem because this is actually pushed into the wing itself. Where the other workflow we've been talking about with the live booleans, if I, it turns out that after I get everything, all my elements done here, and I don't like it here, let's go with a little shinier material. All right, let's see, let's go at least shinier like this, right? So if I, it turns out I don't like that anymore, I now got to go oh, find the mesh where the wings were done before I added in all this scribe lining. That's the big difference, the technique I've been talking about the last two hours compared to the one I just showed there in a couple minutes, right? I prefer, in many cases, to have the ability to mess around and figure it out, right? I want to be able to look at and see and then to get everything in place and go, do I really like that or do I want to change some things up? Okay. Yeah, depending on your system, live boolean can definitely start taxing taxing your system a little bit. It depends on the system uh, because then, you know, this is a, a rendering thing that's happening. And it's another reason why I go folder based because I can turn things on and off, right? If I don't want to see the middle portion anymore, I can turn it off. And if I don't need to see the cockpit, I can turn it off, right? And then I can just focus on just the wings now and nothing else. So there's another reason why I like to go in the folders, just besides being able to do this. I use this a lot. In fact, this is one of the main things I like with the folders, being able to do these simple actions, right? So this gear has simple actions, okay? But I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but in your plugin, Subtool Master, you can do everything in Subtool Master by just the folder as well. So you can see there's an exporting options. There's, this is where you can copy a folder and also paste a folder. So this is where I'll do a lot of copy and pasting of folders as well. I'm maybe duplicating something that I want to move around somewhere else. So it's a great way to do this. Right? So hopefully that helps. So. Depending on my schedule, because <laughs> I was hoping to have all this like done and actually show you guys a finished version so we can start working on the interior um, and also work on the rendering portions, right? So hopefully if my schedule doesn't get crazy again on me, all right, I will get my ship to a point where I have all this done, all this scribe lining done, all these pieces that I'm doing here, right? So I'm going to now start this process through here, right? And going through this. So there you have it. So this is why I like the folder. You got this and you got this, right? So I don't want this applied. I wanna stay, I wanna stay in this mode as much as I can. I'm gonna delete this. I wanna stay in this as long as I can, honestly, right? Because I wanna be able to start designing and start looking at everything together designed. I kind of like these, this kind of, this is the beauty of this technique. That's like a happy mistake right there that I wouldn't have caught. Hey Lucy, how are you? How's it going? Okay, so, all right, that's already two hours. Man, frick, I ramble. I am just a rambler. I'm a rambler. Okay, so let me go through, I wanna go through, let me catch up on some questions real quick right here and see, okay. Uh, yeah, you can definitely use engraving. You know what? There's, there's another good way to go about doing stuff. Where, uh, you know, if you guys want to think about this, think about even stuff like here's a cool approach to do some things as well. Um, just be, this is just making me think of something else. I'm gonna grab. Let me grab uh, this. Okay, and then let me say. All right, that's a. Let's go. That's good. And then let me duplicate this, all right? And I'm gonna divide this one up a little bit more. Okay, here's something else that you guys might wanna 
just mess around with is sculpturally yeah. i also like to do sometimes i do this where i'm sure you guys have had times where you need to do have yeah. like some kind of armor piece or something like that right so what this is doing is i'm digging in on this sphere right and then there's this sphere above it okay so i'm going to switch this as the add right and then do this and you can see there's transitioning happening here okay, let me let me actually okay undo it so i can do stuff like this right and i'm adding here right and i can smooth this out and you can see what this does because i'm pretty much from another sphere this is i guess another way to do non-destructive in a sense right this is the sphere that's just the outer purpose and then this is the different sphere right and now what's nice is specifically with this particular brush if i do a morph target you guys can do stuff like this right i'm gonna do something like that and then i can sculpt across i can do here and do straight lines across and then continue that and then come around here and just continue drawing this however i want right and if i now add on top of this in lazy mouse we throw this lazy snapping so i'm going to undo this i'm going to throw a lazy snapping of let's say 50 in here okay so that when you're drawing like this and then i'm coming across like say something like that if i rotate the model right you can continue the stroke okay and then now you can start doing stuff like this doing stuff like this right and then now I can even smooth it out and I'm smoothing the sphere that's inside. But then of course the benefit to us here is, okay, this sphere and this sphere, let's go ahead and let's say, let's fill it with this color and this material. So now they both have the same, but now I can come here and say, you know what, I want this to have a little blue. I, I don't know why, don't try to figure me out right now, people. And then fill that object and then see now this sphere is different colored right and different brush strokes happening right and I'm working on the inside one so this is something else is a cool little trick sometimes that I'll do and then this sphere at any time I could also just shrink it down a little bit and then that'll shrink down all those if I want right just another just another way to go about doing something right and then here's with live boolean and now i've made thickness right see there's thickness with now this cutting out happening it's just it's endless right but sometimes i'll do this especially if i'm doing some kind of armor maybe and i want to figure out a little nice little part what i want right and there's there's different strokes here right for this we need a we need more topology than that for that one that one's pretty intense. Right, so that's nice. This one's got like a peak to it. Right, so see what happened right there? That's because the morph targets not available. Because morph targets are only available on the subdivision level that you made it. So I would delete, store morph target, and then now see this is this will be fine. Right, and then I can smooth it out a little bit too if I want to. Right, you can start creating things like that. So that's a fun little one sometimes I'll use from time to time. Back to the question. Hey, Dougie. Welcome to the stream. Uh, all right. Do you guys have any questions about the stuff? I know today I was kind of rambly and a little all over. Because I was... And as I was showing you guys my techniques of my head, how it works when I start doing this. Obviously... I do it a lot faster when I'm just doing it because I'm messing around a lot. Jimmy, you had a question. Can you update the cutting panels you did before? I'm not sure. Or do you have to create new brushes? So wh what I would do, people, is when we were talking about creating this brush, you guys should save this out as a tool now. Right? And I would call this, I don't know, scribe line. 
right? So I'd save this tool out and I've always got it. And if I want different scribe lines, I just load this tool, add to it, and then off and running, okay? Can you clamp the random rotation of the nano mesh to like 45 degrees or 90 degrees? Uh, so when you're talking nano, 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 well, let me make sure I understand your question, doctor. Dr. Depresso, let me make sure, let me get some nanos. Okay, and let me make a nano brush real quick. Uh, let's grab a shape so we can see rotation. Uh, let's use this brush, create nano. Oh, yeah, let's use a vent. Okay, I'm going to say all polygons. Yeah, vent. Okay, so this is vents. You know, let's, let's not have so much. Let's make it a lot more easy for you guys to visually see what's going on. Let me make the plane have way less divisions. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then insert nano. Okay, so I got this plane, right? And then you're in nano, right? And then you're randomizing this. Is that what you're talking about? You're doing these this randomize? Is that what you're referring to? Oh, yeah, this technique that I'm showing 100%, I would now be able to create Rebull with this for sure. Right, Brian, I'll come to your question back real quick. I'm just, let me, let me see if I'm getting Dr. Depresso. Can you, so you can do this and then you can even clip these. So they're clipping, right? So they're being cut. If I make the size one and I make them fit, they're being cl clipped by the plane and I can even make them filled. Right? So in essence, this could be a random alpha pickup for Greeble. For sure. And I can even say, hey, let me also add this to it. And now I can add this one to it. And now this seed can be random as well. Right? And then now I can just come here and say alpha. Right? I can say from mesh. And then say okay, and then there's an alpha, right? And then now I can say okay, that there's that one, and then I can say all right, I don't need now this, right? So you have different states, right? So there's an index zero and an index one. So one is the bigger one, and two is the only one. So I'm going to say delete all, and now I'm back to this, and now I make a different one. Now I grab this and say this, and now I randomize that. Okay, and then say now I want this with it and I don't want that to be randomized. I want that to kind of be more of a repeat pattern that's kind of happening. Say something like that, right? And then you just go again to your alpha and you say from mesh and you say, okay, and now I have that. Now, what also I could do is I can come here and say index zero, right? Which is that circular piece with the other little circles. I could just come say edit mesh, right? Turn on the gizmo, right? I swapped that out and edit mesh and then I just swapped out that piece. So I could combine those elements, right? So, and then now you just, again, alpha, and then you say from mesh, there it is. And you say, okay. Right, but this would also go back to the stream that I did on, what is today, Thursday, Tuesday, where I was using also nano tile to make repeatable. So I would do a combination of doing that with this. Right, so there you go. Um, Brian, your question is, uh, what are some of the best ways to flatten an object on a Boolean mesh? Can you elaborate more on that, Brian? What do you mean by flattening the object? Do you mean converting it to the actual topology, and so instead of just being the live Boolean, making it the actual mesh itself, like I did with the folders? Is that what you mean by flattening the object? Or do you mean by literally doing some kind of flattening? 
Damon, to your question, is there a way to fill a solid mesh with lattice structure for 3D printing? No. No, we haven't written any code for that, but any printing software is going to already have that. So any, any software you're going to use will have that already for the printers. Um, Brian, if you want to elaborate on that for me while I'm reading this next question. Having multiple curves on the objects more than two, so to speak, I'm currently using the topology brush and then different brush with curve active to edit topo brush curves. Is there maybe a different less? No. No, there's no, there's no other way to do that. Like you could definitely lay out masks. Um, you could do the slicing and then frame based upon a slice and then switch to like the topology brush to do something like that. But no, there's, to what you're asking, Celine, no. Oh, okay, Brian, you an like I answered your own question. So you, so then I guess you're referring to just creating the actual result. Me, I like to use, again, I like to use the folders because that way I keep everything together still and I have the result. And then the other way is here in the Booleans, you make booleans, but then that's going to make a new tool and every start group is going to become a sub tool or you guys could just merge. I could also just do this. I could take this, right? And I can merge the folder, right? And what that does is create the mesh with all the merged pieces like this, right? So all the pieces are merged like that. Okay, and then you can just come in here and I can say in deformers, I can say right here, remesh by union. That's also Booleans. And then there you go. Now, what's gonna be key about this is you see these parts here, right there, they need to be converted, right? So I would take say this, oh, let's turn on symmetry. This and say that one and that one, and then I would come down here, right, in polygroups, I would say group as a Diana mesh sub. It's an old feature, but then when I'm doing this, I can come through here and remesh by union, and then now you see they get used as the subtractive, and that's actually what I wanted. Right, so that's another way to Boolean, right? So I just merge the folder, it creates a new sub tool for me, and then I just did that union. Okay. So that Brian, maybe that that's if that's what you're referring to. That's another way of doing it. So that's, there's th really three ways to go about doing the Boolean process. Right. And that one I just shared is really nice. Because there's times where I'm just throwing a bunch of pieces together and sometimes I just, that one subtool, it's all in one subtool and I just want to weld everything together and delete all the internal geometry. That's an easy way to do it is through the actual deformers, right? It's an easy way to go about it. Hydrate. Black pixel to your question. Unfortunately, I, I can't really say what's coming down the pipe and what we'll be doing. Unfortunately, I can't really discuss much about development. All right. Okay, so is there any last minute questions before I call this a Dunsky stream? Sorry, I rambled a lot today, but I was just really trying to welcome to getting in my head how I like to go about thinking about this, right? How I want to go about figuring out my process and going through here. So I showed a couple different ways. All right, I'm hoping I can get to to this model more this this coming week, the rest of the week and the weekend. And next stream I have with this ship will be two weeks from now. I'll have a, it done for you guys. And you guys can see my done process. And then we're gonna move into trying to make the interior stuff and then making a cool render like we talked about at the beginning of this stream, right? Making something that looks cool. Here. Jimmy requests for you. Look up here! Look up here! You gotta love it. You gotta love this. If you guys have never seen the Three Amigos, listen, it's the 80s, baby. I love the 80s. Caca, caca. 
ah, look up here, look up here, look up here. I don't know, it's just stuck with me forever in my life. I don't know why. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys have really enjoyed the stream. Uh, and uh, before I call it a dunce, I want to make sure anybody, someone's got another question. Hold on, I just saw one come in. In creating an IMM brush curve, is there a way to make the geo attach from its end on the curve rather than from the mesh center? Uh, wait, let me, hold on, I gotta reread this question to myself, make sure I'm West 3D art from you. I was just reading your question right now. Okay, and in creating an IMM curve brush, okay, so you're going along a curve IMM, so there's an insert mesh brush along curve. Is there a way to make the geo attach from its end on the curve rather than from the mesh center? Uh, I'm not, I, are you saying, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more like eyelashes? Oh, you want to like create eyelashes. Uh, well, if I was creating eyelashes, I would just use, I could use a curve, right? Go along that curve like that. Right. Uh, here, let's grab a model. Let's grab a model. Mm-hmm. Let's grab the girl. She's much more interesting to look at. Okay. All right, so let's divide her up a little bit. Okay. Darn it. Good job, West. We're going on a tangent. You guys got me for a little more time now. Let me let me double check the schedule and make sure that there's not somebody after me. Hold on. Let me make sure. I know Solomon's going today. I just don't remember the time he's going today. Let's say the ninth. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, he's actually coming up. All right, so I won't be able to spend too much more time with you guys because I gotta get Solomon to go. Okay, so eyelashes. Okay, number one. One way you might wanna look at doing these is coming in here all right, and then just doing a mask where you want the eyelashes, okay? Something like that. And then fiber mesh it. So throw on some preview fiber meshes. Okay, that's way too many. So I'm gonna go a lot lower, okay? They need a lot more volume coverage to them. Something like that, okay? And then the gravity needs to go the opposite direction. Right? So this is how I would start doing eyelashes. Boom, right? You've got them. And then you can do randomness with the coverage, have more random coverage. Um, you can have more random lengths. And then maybe you don't want them as long or you want them longer. Maybe you don't want any random. You want them all the same size. Me, I would go for realism, okay? And then looking at this, okay, they're just flat planes. Like you can assign anything to it. I can put a texture on it, right? And they all got the same texture, right? And then when I go to render, these are actually also gonna give me a render, right? Through here, I can just start doing stuff with rendering. So I can say, how about profile them? So I'll give them a profile of four. And then now they've got volume to them. And then now maybe the coverage is too much. Right, so stuff like like this is how you might also want to do some eyelashes. Like that's a, me, that's, that's the quickest way to go about doing the eyelashes like that. And then I accept, I accept the eyelashes. And then now they're a sub-tool. Okay, that would be an approach. So this is kind of how I would go about eyelashes. Personally, I wouldn't necessarily use an insert mesh brush, but if you wanted to use an insert mesh brush, you definitely could, right? So you can come along here. I'm gonna grab this. Let's use a cube, right? And then you wanted with curve on, right? And then curve it out. So now this is going to, by default, it's looking at the surface, right? Here, right? So this, for me is not doing really what I want to do. So I'm going to switch to actually curve two. And now I've got a tube and I'm going to go, sorry, I'm going so fast people, but I got to let Solomon have time to go. He's 
he's coming up. So in like 30 minutes, Solemn's going to start streaming, right? So there's some eyelashes, right? But like you're saying, you got to now, you know, go this route, right? And I'm going to go smaller. And then tap, 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 oops, tap. And you just tap somewhere else on the surface, tap, right? And then now you're getting that. Right, so you could do that with the tube. Right, I'm just going along with the tube, and then I've turned on this size and I've flipped vertically so that it's big at the bottom and tiny at the top. The other thing that you could do, right, is take a plane, okay, and let's initialize that so it's got nothing but that, okay. And then I'm going to say brush, create insert, let's say new. All right, let's go back to her and let's turn these off and let's go to this. We don't need, we don't need that much. Let's go like that. All right, and let's say, this is me just, honestly, this is me just experimenting, going, okay, uh, let's turn. This is an insert mesh brush, but let's actually turn this brush, right, into a nano, which is in essence creating a new Z modeler. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-polygroup just along here randomly. Like, we're running out of time, but I'm just gonna do this really quick and dirty for you. Right? And then now I'm a nano and I'm gonna say all polygons. Okay, but not all polygons. I'm gonna say polygroup all. So they go here. Right? And so what I've done now is I've created a nano. Nano, nano, nano. Right? And that nano is just a plane. Right? And then that's just being put on every single polygon, but then I can randomize it how I want, right? But so what I could do, right, to give you an idea here, instead of doing it like this, I'm gonna say, let's go to brush, let's take this brush, let's convert this to a nano, and let's select the cube, and let's do polygroup all, draw those out, I'm going to randomize those. Okay. And then now these have abilities to change the heights and the widths. So you can do this is going, and then the alignment can play a role, right? So you can see you can shift the alignment. And now these are all along the normals. So you could do stuff like this. And the benefit to this is this is a nano, right? So if I wanna manipulate the mesh and change it up a little bit, right? You can say edit mesh and then you can manipulate the mesh here, right? So I can say, I don't know, Q mesh it, pull it out, right? And then maybe do a little changing in the size maybe and then upping it and then rotating it. I don't know, it's your, it's your world, man. I'm just living it, right? And you see this is all gonna start getting stretched across a different route, way, right? And then now you start playing with your lengths, and your widths, and your heights, right? So you can go this route, of course. Me, I like using the fiber mesh for something like eyelashes. Yes, you can take a plane and have a texture with transparency. Absolutely, 100% you can do that, right? It's the same thing as taking this and then you throw a texture map on this, like say something like this, and then transparency is on. Insert mesh brushes and it will, will bring this over. Sure, absolutely. Me, I like the fiber mesh for something like what you brought up. Okay, unfortunately I gotta go because Solomon's gonna be up next. So honestly, in like 30 minutes, you're gonna have Solomon Blair going. So, uh, I got to let go of the channel so he can get going and I got to move on to my other stuff today. 
Hopefully I can get that model done for you guys. So 2 o'clock today, Solomon Blair is going to go, which is in T minus 34 minutes here. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you took something from it. Uh, hopefully I just answered that question for you. Uh, all right, and then we can go through that. Unfortunately, CJ, uh, CG Raymond's. Um, if you're available next Tuesday, bring that cloth curve with a question with me. I got to go, unfortunately. Um, but I do stream again on next Tuesday at 3 p.m. So if you're, if you're free that time, hit me up there. Or just like I said, you guys can email me as well. Here, so I'll put my email in. Whoops. So there's my email address, right? So um, to your question about that cloth curve, email me, CG Raymonds, if you want. Okay, everyone, have a delicious evening. If it's evening for you already, a oh, glorious afternoon if you're in the same time zone as me. Wherever you are in the world, I really appreciate you taking time, uh, coming to me on this crazy, wacky journey. Uh, love it, love it, love it, love it. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Please be safe out there. Stay quarantined. Social distancing, let's practice it. All right, have a wonderful day wonderful day uh and i'm going to go out now see ya <laughs>